Hey everyone, welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you a new tool Microsoft is building called SQL Operations Studio. And it's a lightweight development tool uh, that you can also use for doing operational activities on your SQL database uh, instances or SQL Server instances as well. And it actually is a cross-platform tool. It runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And uh, you can connect to um, not only SQL databases, but you can also connect to Azure SQL database as well as Azure SQL Data Warehouse. And um, what I'll show you is a way to install it and some of the basics of the tool uh, running on Windows operating system. And in the future videos, I'll show you how to get it up and running on a Linux operating system as well, such as Ubuntu. So to get started, uh, the easiest way to find it is if you just uh, Google for SQL Operations Studio and you'll be able to find uh, different links to it. Right now, I'm actually showing you uh, the SQL Server blog. And this is uh, the announcement uh, page for uh, my, Microsoft releasing this tool. But uh, you also find that there, it's an open source tool, so you can actually see the source code on GitHub. So um, here, what I am going to do is I'm going to go to this Download SQL Operation Studio link. And um, you can also find it if you uh, simply try to go to um, AKMS slash SQL Ops Studio. And when you go here, uh, you'll, you'll get to basically the same page. So um, here you can actually see the installers for uh, the Windows instance, the Mac OS instance and Linux instance. And in this case, I'm going to simply uh, use the the download link that is provided up here. And it's going to download it right away for me and uh, put it on my computer wherever I, wherever I need to save it. But uh, since I already have it downloaded, I just put it on my desktop. It's a zip file. All you have to do is just extract it somewhere on your computer um, and you're able to run it. So I've done that as well. And uh, here you can see that it comes in uh, with a bunch of different files. There's a bunch of DLLs. And all you have to do is just look for the SQL ops.exe uh, file. So once you have it, you simply double click on it and it will bring up the ID itself. One of the things you'll notice right away if you're familiar with Visual Studio Code and some of the other uh, Atom based ID editors. This is actually using the Electron or the Atom um, type of uh, ID interface and development pattern uh, to make this tool uh, cross platform compatible. And this is actually uh, similar uh, to what Visual Studio Code is using um, for its cross platform capability as well. So, in here, um, you'll basically get prompted with connecting uh, to a particular instance of a SQL server or a database. And um, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can either just click on Add Connection, or up at the top, you can click a new connection, which basically gets you the same thing. And then on the bottom right corner, uh, what you'll do is you're able to uh, just specify the different connection information. So in here, I'll just type in the name of the server that I'm going to connect to, whether you want to do SQL login or Windows authentication. So in my case, I've already set up uh, a database on my SQL server. So I'll just use the integrated uh, authentication, which is Windows authentication. And then I'll provide the name of the database. Now, if you don't provide the name of the database, it will actually connect to the SQL instance directly and we'll give you all the databases that you can manage. So in here, I'll just type in the name of the database and it's gonna be just TestDB and I'll click connect. And that's pretty much it. Um, here you, you connect it to a database and you're able to start navigating. Now, this is a very basic uh, tool at this point. Uh, Microsoft is just beginning to work on, on some of the capabilities of it. So I'll, I'll go through some of the features um, real quick. So the first thing you'll notice is that you're able to uh, see the tables, views, um, and basically if you're familiar with SQL Management Studio, you'll be very familiar with these uh, terms here. So if you go to tables, you'll see the actual tables view. If you go to programmability, you can see the store procedures views, um, and you can click on them. Now here uh, is some of the first things you'll probably notice right away if you're using uh, and used to SQL Management Studio. Typically, when you click on tables and right-click, you're able to create a new table. 
uh, but as you can see in here, it doesn't have that experience. So this is a very, very basic tool at this point. It doesn't really give you the capability of using the user interface to create these uh, different types of objects yet. You're going to have to resort to actually creating the scripts uh, yourself in order to be able to do that. Or another trick you can do is if you right click and um, just simply say script as create, it will give you uh, a scripted version of the table that you might already have. You can adjust it and um, basically execute this script and it should actually create you that table. And that's as long as you're not creating a, a brand new database. So that's just one thing. Um, the other thing you're able to do in here is if you right click, you can uh, select the top uh, 1000 records and you'll see the results pretty quickly. You're also able to do things like uh, show the actual execution plan. So if you click on explain, it will show you the, the query plan itself, uh, which is something that you also have in SQL Management Studio. And then uh, you can see uh, the top operations. Uh, as well as the results. Now, in this case, because I'm actually looking at the query plan, it's showing me the results of the plan, which is an XML based um, result set. So I'm here, I, I don't need to see that. So I'll just go ahead and actually, well, let me actually rerun this query real quick. So um, you can just uh, click run and it will run that again. You also get the basics of IntelliSense uh, just like you do in um, Management Studio as well. So if uh, I want to select, let's say, first name from person, and I'll just run it, and you can see I can I can actually get all of that information here. So you can also see that you can export the information from this view, um, and apparently you can even do a chart. So, uh, but I'm sure you're going to have to actually. Um, set it up so that it actually produces uh, results and here I'm just getting the name so the chart wouldn't be very useful in this case but if you wanted to say this information is for example the JSON the result set you can uh, do that by clicking the export as JSON so another thing you can do is uh, you can actually edit the data right in here but one of the things that uh, I actually discovered is um, if uh, depending on how you set up the table in this particular case it actually doesn't honor um, some of the default settings that are set up on the table so i have my primary id key set and it's automatically incrementing first name last name and birth date are actually not required fields and uh, what i have is birth date is actually using a default value by using the get date function so it should automatically populate but when i try to use uh, this uh, editor here to actually try to uh, save a new record and simply try to bypass specifying the birth date. As soon as I tab out, um, it actually tells me that I have a required field that's missing, and that's because it wants me to actually provide a value uh, in here. So for the birth date, so it is, as soon as I provide it, um, it actually works uh, without issues. So which is not really nice behavior, but keep in mind this is a, still a preview tool. Um, let's see, what else can you do in here? So you can take a look at the basic schema information. You can't really do anything with this uh, data here at this point um, because there, there's no functionality. You can just only navigate the metadata um, and not actually manage that um, instance of, of that object that we're looking into. You can see the different views, uh, and then also under the programmability and store procedures, I have a store procedure that was created. And again, I can script it out, uh, but I can't uh, cl right click on it and say execute like you can in Management Studio. But I can go ahead and um, just simply type in the name of that uh, store procedure and run it. And it gives me all the details that that store procedure is able to retrieve. So for the time being, if you want to be able to just execute some of the existing store procedures or view the data and do very, very basic uh, table editing, you can actually start using this tool and start contributing feedback back to Microsoft. Or if you're a developer, you can actually start contributing uh, to the actual uh, code base as well, because the way it's written, it's actually highly customizable and there's a plugin model that uh, I'm sure they support to be able to start extending the, the functionality of this tool. 
Um, so let's see what what else can I show you here. So under the Explorer window, you can also uh, define the the folder. So for example, if you're working with the database, and let's try this real quick. So let's say you you're starting to work on a project and you want to be able to um, store scripts for this database. So I'm gonna just go ahead and create a test DB folder under my documents. I'll select the folder. It's gonna reconnect now. Uh, when actually connected initially, I didn't specify. Um, well, I specified Windows authentication. So in this case, it actually uh, authenticated directly. If you're using SQL authentication and you don't uh, tell it to save the credentials, it will ask you to reconnect. But in my case, Windows authentication kicked in and it, it took me in there right away. So if I go back to the um, the file view, you can see that the folder uh, is open. So if I actually try to do something like script the, the table, uh, the person table database, I can go ahead and try to save it. And it's going to automatically put it in that folder here uh, that I pointed to in this editor. So let me just call it a person. And now I should be able to see it in my files view. So in here you can see that I can click it, make changes to it. And uh, the nice thing about it is you can actually configure uh, a Git repository for this. And uh, you should be able to start versioning, controlling, uh, version controlling these files as well. So it creates a, a nice uh, way for you to version control all of the changes that you're performing against the database. So as this tool actually gets better and expands in functionality and features, uh, you'll be able to start using them uh, here as well. So, and another uh, view that it has is the task history. So you're able to do things like when you try to back up a database or restore a database, these tasks should show up. So let's take a look real quick. See if we can actually see that information. So I double clicked on this um, view here or on this instance of a database, and it has backup and restore buttons here. So if I click backup, uh, it pre populates all this information. I'm going to specify a full backup, and I'll just keep the, uh, the path information here. And let's go ahead and actually click backup. And as you can see, it showed up under the tasks. Now, if I uh, try to restore, Let's see what it has for me. So it, it basically brought up the view of all the different uh, backup sets that I have. Um, I can see the files, uh, the options, and then I can go ahead and uh, restore the database. So when I do that, it gives me this restore database in progress. And it should uh, it, it should restore the database. Now, I, I probably should have also made sure that it closes the connection so it actually does it faster because uh, I had some queries open and in here it actually failed. And let's see why it failed because the database is in use. So that's exactly uh, the issue that um, I would, probably should have avoided by you know closing all the different connections. So, but just to kind of show you some of the functionality that this uh, tool provides you with. And um, you can uh, basically go to this uh, link here. And if we actually look, well, let's go to Google real quick. And let's look for SQL Operation Studio and take a look at GitHub. So the first link that actually shows up is the GitHub link. So if you're interested in contributing and uh, to the code itself, or if you want to actually uh, provide some um, comments or log issues, um, as you can see, there's already a few issues being logged in here. So feel free to actually provide your uh, valuable feedback and uh, people will start actually trying to uh, implement some of the functionality here. So hopefully this was useful. This is uh, kind of an interesting way Microsoft is beginning to branch out into multiple operating system management of SQL Server, especially because SQL Server is coming to Linux. So I think it's going to be very useful for many people uh, being able to actually leverage uh, SQL on multiple platforms itself. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section below, and I will try to answer your questions. And uh, next time I'll try to show you how to actually get this up and running on Ubuntu Linux, because the first time I actually tried it, um, it was giving me some trouble of trying to uh, when I tried to execute it. So hopefully I'll, I'll get that quickly resolved, and I'll show you in the next video. Have a good one.